Welcome to the course on introduction to R software. Well, in this course, we are going to learn about uh, different aspects of our software, what is called as R. So, in this uh, lecture, we are going to understand that uh, why should we learn R and how should we install the uh, R software and uh, related software on our computer. The basic idea is that uh, I am going to start this course at a very elementary level so that anyone who has no idea about even about how to install the software or how to operate the computer even he should be able to understand it. So, let us try to uh, try to start the course with this first lecture. Okay. So, first question comes what is R? Right. R is essentially an environment for the data manipulation, statistical computing as well as graphical display and data analysis. Right. R is just like any other software. There are different types of software which uh, helps us in mathematical calculation and statistical data analysis. Similar to them, R is another software. Right. And uh, R has an advantage that R can do data manipulation. R can do statistical computing as well as simulations. R is capable of graphical display and R can also help us in doing different type of data analysis. And just like any other good software, R also has an effective uh, way of data handling. So, it can handle the data easily and it can store the input and output variables. This can store the, uh, the outcome in the form of a scalar as well as form of a vectors or a matrix. Right. And in R software, simple calculations are possible as well as complicated calculations are also possible. And it is not uh, difficult, the mathematical calculation like addition, subtraction, uh, and uh, this vectors and matrices, everything is possible just like any other good software. Whenever we are doing any uh, software handling, there is also a requirement of the graphical output. So, the R is capable of graphical display also and these displays can be made over the screen as well as we can save them in the post script file, PDF file, JPEG file or say any other uh, type of file from which we can obtain the hard copies of the graphics. Right. And uh, our software has its own programming language. For example, we have learned different types of programming language like as Fortran, C, uh, C++ and so on. Similar to that, R also has its own programming language. Right. And uh, this pr programming language is very effective and it includes all sorts of possibilities just like any other good software programming language. Right. The programming language of R is very, very similar to another programming language what we call as S language. Actually earlier there was a software what is called as S plus. And this software S plus had a language what was called as S language. Later on, the R software was developed on the lines of S plus software and the programming language of R is very, very similar to uh, the programming language of S plus. Now, the next question uh, comes over here when there are so many software, then why should I use R or why should I switch to R software? So, let us try to, uh, uh, to understand these facts. Well, the first advantage is that R has, an, R has a statistical computing environment. R can do all sorts of computation what any other software can do. The 
biggest advantage of R is that this is a free software. There is zero cost and R has an open source. How do you mean by open source? For example, in case if I try to use any software, then we really do not uh, know in most of the cases that what is happening inside the program. Usually we simply give the input and we obtain the output. What is happening in between that is usually unknown. But this is not uh, true with uh, our software, right? It is not like a black box, but it is an open source. This is uploaded on the website of R and anyone can uh, look into the program that how the computations are being made. So in this sense, this is an open uh, source. The language of R programming is also very, very convenient and anyone can do statistical and graphical applications using this R programming. Another advantage of R is that whenever we are trying to, uh, to execute a command, then those commands can be saved and uh, those commands can be run and moreover they can be stored in a script file. How does this mean? that whenever we are trying to execute a program, first we have to write down the program in a file and then we have to uh, use for the execution. So all these commands, they can be saved in a separate file so that if you want to retrieve it later on, you can easily do it. Another advantage of R is that this R software is available for all the platform. This is available for Windows platform, Unix platform, Linux platform as well as Macintosh platform. And actually as I said earlier, this R was developed essentially to compete with S plus. S plus is a very good software and uh, but it is a paid software. So one has to pay the cost to buy it. So people uh, started developing this software to compete with S plus. And uh, in this uh, software, there are two types of packages. One type of packages to execute a particular task, they are built in inside the software and, and another type of packages are which are actually contributed packages. What do you mean by contributed packages? That suppose I am doing a research or I develop a new tool and suppose I write the program to execute the new tool in the R programming language, I can submit this program to the developers of R and they will try to verify it, they will try to check it and if they find that everything is alright, then they can upload my program over the site of R. The advantage is that that anyone who wants to use my develop tool, he can simply download the program and can execute its data analysis. So in this R, we have both types of packages, one built-in packages as well as contributed packages. And the users are also given an opportunity to make their own packages. That is another advantage of here R. Just like any other language, the R language also has all sorts of structure. This can provide the logical control of branching, this can provide the looping as well as this can provide the modular programming using the concept of here functions. What does this mean? For example, any uh, software language has several options. We can do the mathematical manipulations, we can do the logical manipulations. And uh, sometimes we have to repeat the program for that we really try to use the concept of loop. And, uh, and in many, many cases, whenever we are trying to deal with a huge program, then the entire program is divided into several smaller parts. And every de uh, developer develops a smaller part and then they are combined together. So that is called as a modular programming. So all these things are possible in R. One can do the mathematical operation, logical operation, one can provide uh, the loops for the repetition of the program as well as one can do the modular programming. When we try to execute any program on R, then 
there are some error messages if there is some problem in the programming and these error messages are helpful in identifying the problems in the program and to execute the program. So just like any other software, R also provides us the error messages which helps us in, a, in the programming and execution of the program. Next aspect of R is that, that R has an interpreter and it is not actually a compiler. What is the difference between interpreter and compiler? Whenever we are writing a program, program is simply a set of some commands which are executed together. So suppose we have written five commands in a file and now when I try to execute it, there are two options. First option is that the execution will start from line number one line and then it comes to line number two, then it comes to line number three and so on and in every line it will try to identify and it will try to check if everything is all right or not, is there any mistake in writing the program? So in interpreter, what happens that when the control starts from line number one, then it comes to line number two. Now suppose there is a problem in the line number one, then the program we will stop there and it will uh, give us an error message and unless and until we uh, uh, we look into the error and we try to correct the program, the control will not go on the second line. And similarly, when I try to, uh, try to correct my first line, can the control comes on the second line. Suppose second line has no issues, so the control will come on the third line. Now suppose on the third line, there is some error, there is some problem in writing the program. So now the program will stop there and it will ask us to first correct the error on the third line and only after that it will go to the fourth line. Whereas another option is to use a compiler. In compiler what will happen? The execution of the program will start and it will start from line number one, line number two and line number three and it will reach to the last line. And in every line it will try to find out the, uh, the problems and errors and then it will try to compile all the errors in a separate file and then the program will be executed. So after the execution of the program, we have to look into the outcome and then we have to see that which lines have error and then we have to, uh, to correct the entire program. So in the interpreter, the errors are given at every line, at every stage, whereas in the compiler, the errors are given only uh, say all together. So R has an interpreter that it will go line by line and as soon as it finds a mistake in a line that will stop the program over there and first you have to correct the uh, mistake and then it will move to the next line. Right, okay. Another thing is that, uh, that whenever we are trying to use the R, then as soon as we try to type the command over the so called command line, don't worry for this uh, uh, language, it means very soon I will try to show you how the software looks and how uh, these command line interface and all these uh, technical language, uh, they, are, they are understood. Right, so as soon as we uh, type a command and we press the enter key on, on my uh, keyboard, the program is executed. Right, so that, that's a very simple thing, but if you don't want to write the entire program, but if you want to uh, make only a one line statement, you simply have to type it and then press the enter key on your keyboard and the program will be executed, right. Now some tips that whenever you are trying to play with the R software, you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move to the earlier commands and this will help us in, in, in editing them. Suppose you are writing something and you want to cancel the command, then in that case you can simply use the escape key that there is a key on the computer which is something like ESC. So you simply have to press the escape key and the execution of the command will be cancelled. And as I said earlier that in case if you want to do with the graphics, different types of plot, different types of graphs, different types of graphics can be constructed using the R software and they can be saved in a post script file, PDF file as well as they can be saved in a and say this JPEG format, PNG format, they can simply be copied and pasted into another file and so on. 
right. The, the next thing which uh, uh, comes that how should we get R and how to install it on the computer, right. So now let us try to understand this thing. This is a very simple thing. Means if you have a little bit idea about using the internet, anybody can do it, right. So in order to install the R, what we might try to do that there is a website. This website is www.r-project.org, right. And uh, what we try to do here that we try to execute this command and then I will try to show you what are we going to get. And the same outcome I am trying to write down here if you try to see I have simply copied and pasted but you but but in order to make you more confident what I will try to do here that that I will try to show you this online right okay. So www.rproject.org if you try to see we have got this website right. So you can see here. Now what I have done just for the sake of convenience and in order to illustrate it, what I have taken a screenshot of this web page and I have copied it here. So I am sure that this will not uh, create any confusion for you but it will help us in understanding the things. So once you come to this home page then what you have to do here that you need to go here. There is a command here download R. For example, I can show you here, for example, you can see here there is a download R here and here you double click it and once you double click it, it will give you this home page, right. That is the same thing which I am trying to show you here also. So you can uh, click over here at the download uh, icon and then in the next site, you will get here this type of site what you have obtained. So on the left hand side, you can see here that there are different types of addresses which are given. So actually different people in different countries, they have uploaded the software. So you can click on any of the link and it will open the page for downloading the R software. So you can just click over here or say here, whatever you want, right. And then once you do it, then you will get the software over here. For example, I can show you here that uh, once you try to do it here, for example, if I try to say here in Austria, so suppose I try to bring over here, it will just uh, go to that place and it will uh, download the software, right. You can see over here and here you can see that uh, you can here download the thing. So let us now come back to our original slide where I have just taken a screenshot and I have pasted it here for a better understanding. So now you can see here uh, that there are here different types of link. One link is download R for Linux, this is for Macintosh and this is for here Windows. So depending on the platform which you have, you can just double click on it, you can download the software and after that you have to simply double click uh, on the software and then the, and the software will be installed on your computer, right. After this I will suggest you to install another software also. Now after this we come to another aspect. Whenever we are working with our software, we have two options. Either we can work directly with the R software we can execute the command inside the R software and second option is that I can take help of, an, of a supplementary software which works inside the R from outside. So, so there are uh, different types of software which are, which are available and in this course I am going to use a software what is called as R Studio, right. So R Studio is essentially a software which helps in the execution of R software. And uh, beside R Studio, there are other types of software which are available. For example, one of the uh, another software is here Tin R, and this can be downloaded from this site. 
and but I can use anyone actually. I'm not trying to say at all that either 10R is better than R Studio or vice versa. Means I have chosen R Studio to work. So this R Studio is actually written in the C++ programming language. R Studio is also a free software because it's an open source software, and this can be freely downloaded from this website. So what we have to do here that we simply need to copy this uh, uh, link and then we have to open it in the internet browser. So for example, I can show you here that if I try to say here type here our aristudio.com then I get here this thing. So I have simply taken here of a screenshot of this thing. So what we need to do this software will be opened. And now we have to simply come over here and then I have to click over here at the download part and this software we will be downloaded. And once this software is uh, downloaded, then you can install it on the computer. So essentially you will see that uh, once you have installed the R software and R Studio software, you will have a, a link like this here R and click us here R Studio. And now we are ready to move into the learning of our software. So this was the first lecture in which I have tried to give you a basic idea that why should we use R and how should we install the software on our computer, how to obtain the software and possibly this will help you in uh, getting ready for learning the, uh, the course content of the R software in the next lecture. So, we will see you in the next lecture, till then goodbye.